is the physical science lesson video for section 2.2 and as always if you want my videos in one spot then just subscribe to my channel. So today we're going to talk about physical properties. So a physical property is any characteristic of a material that can be observed or measured without changing the composition of the substances in the material. So some examples are viscosity, conductivity, malleability, hardness, melting point, boiling point, and density. Those are some examples of physical properties. So we'll talk about some of these, but think about boiling point. We can measure the boiling point of water without turning water into something else. Now you may think, well wait a minute, the water's going to boil and become steam. Well steam is still water, it's just in a gas form. So we just changed the state of matter, we didn't change what the composition actually was, it's still H2O. Okay, so let's talk about some of these. <clears throat> so viscosity, the tendency of a liquid to keep from flowing, or its resistance to flowing, is called its viscosity. The greater the viscosity, the slower the liquid moves. So think about this, if I'm pouring water versus pouring honey, honey has more of a resistance to flow, so honey would be more viscous. The viscosity of a liquid usually decreases when it's heated. So for example, when I'm at home and I make pancakes and I get the syrup out, it comes out pretty slowly because it's at room temperature. Well, actually, at my house, I keep it in the refrigerator because I'm weird, but that's okay. So mine's really viscous because it's nice and cold. But when I go to IHOP and get pancakes there, they have that heated up syrup. And boy, I start pouring that, and it pours like water because it's heated, so it's less viscous than my syrup at home that's been in the refrigerator. Conductivity. A material's ability to allow heat or energy to flow through is called conductivity. So we've talked about these in some of the previous chapters. Materials that have high conductivity, such as metals, are called conductors. So we talked about this in the electricity uh, chapter, of course, because we talked about electricity passing through metal wires. <clears throat> malleability. Malleability is the ability of a solid to be hammered without shattering. Most metals are malleable. Solids that shatter when struck are brittle. So for example, if you've ever seen like a blacksmith on TV or in real life and they're hammering that hot metal and it's just bending and shaping the metal, it's not breaking it. Whereas, you know, if you try to hammer glass with a hammer, it's going to shatter. So glass would be an example of something that's brittle. Hardness. One way to compare the hardness of two materials is to see which of the materials can scratch the other. Diamond is the hardest known material. So if you have two substances and you want to know which one's harder, if you try to scratch them on each other, the one that's damaged is the least hard of the two. Okay, and this is just an example of Mohs hardness scale and it just shows some different um, substances and where they stand on the hardness scale. And as you can see, diamond is of course the hardest material known to man. <clears throat> melting and boiling points. The temperature at which a substance changes from a solid to a liquid is the melting point and the temperature at which a substance's internal pressure equals external pressure is its boiling point. So notice boiling point's definition is not just when it goes from liquid to gas. It deals with pressure. When the internal pressure equals external pressure, that's when a substance boils. Density. Density is the ratio of the mass of a substance to its volume. So density equals mass divided by volume. And so if you build what's called a density column, the most dense substances will be near the bottom, and the less dense substances will be near the top. So density is what determines if something floats or sinks. If something is less dense than water, it will float in the water. If something is more dense than water, it will sink in the water. Physical properties are used to identify a material, to choose a material for a specific purpose, or to separate the substances in a mixture. So we can use it to identify a material, choose a material, or separate substances in a mixture based on knowing the physical properties. So how can we separate mixtures? Well, through filtration and distillation. Those are two common separation methods. So filtration is a process that separates materials based on the size of the particles. So if you remember from the previous lesson video, we talked about the difference in solution, colloid, and suspension. And out of those three, only suspension could be filtered because of its large particles. So if you don't have a large enough particles, you cannot separate something through filtering. Filtration is most commonly used to separate a solid from a liquid. So think about coffee. The coffee grounds, the solid stays in the paper, the liquid water passes through the paper. And so what comes out is it absorbs the color, the aroma, and the flavor from the coffee. 
that the coffee grounds itself should not pass through the filter paper. Distillation, on the other hand, is a process that separates the substances in a solution based on their boiling points. Distillation is commonly used to separate liquids and to separate solids that are dissolved in liquids. So distillation works by separating based on boiling points. So if I have two substances, let's say I have something dissolved in water. Um, let's just call it compound X. Let's say compound X has a boiling point of 500 degrees Celsius. Water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. So if I can heat my flask up to 100, the water will become a gas and then it'll travel down this tube and be separated from compound X because compound X is not going to boil until 500 degrees Celsius. Now the problem is if you have two things mixed where their boiling points are too close, it's hard to use distillation. You usually need a pretty good distance between the boiling points of the two uh, substances involved. So physical changes occur when some of the properties of the material change, but the substances in the material remain the same. So that's what I'm talking about, the boiling of water. So the state of matter changed, or the phase changed, but it's still H2O. So that would be a physical change. Physical changes can be reversible or irreversible. So melting ice, I can heat it, melt it, I can put it in the freezer and refreeze it and it becomes ice again. Whereas irreversible would be like cutting paper or cutting hair. If I cut my hair, then I can't just magically reattach my hair. Now, yes, could I glue it together or whatever? Yes, but you can't use anything else. I can't magically reattach the hair. Um, so that's why we say they can be reversible or irreversible. So, section 2.2 assessment. List seven examples of physical properties. All right, so we have viscosity, conductivity, malleability, hardness, melting point, boiling point, what am I leaving out, density? And density, there we go. Whew. I was worried I wasn't going to remember all seven off the top of my head, so I wrote them down. All right, describe three uses of physical properties. Well, there's lots of different uses for physical properties. It can be used, like, for example, we use conductivity in wires to pass electricity through. Um, another example would be we use the malleability property in order to hammer weapons, uh, you know, through blacksmithing and things like that. Um, and another example of a physical property would be density allows us to tell whether something is going to float or sink. Name two processes that are used to separate mixtures. Well, that would be filtration and distillation. Filtration and distillation. When you describe a liquid as thick, are you saying that it has a high or low viscosity? So think about honey. We would say honey is thick. So it has a high viscosity because it doesn't want to flow as quickly as something like water. So it would have high viscosity. Explain why sharpening a pencil is an example of a physical change. Well, when you sharpen a pencil, you're really just shaving little bits of the wood off. It's still a pencil. It's still wood shavings. We didn't change the composition. So because the composition remains the same, it's a physical change. We just changed the shape of the pencil at that point. How could you find out whether copper is harder or softer than plastic? We use the scratch test. You scratch them against each other and the one that's damaged is the softer of the two. Why would you expect the materials used to make pot holders to be poor conductors of heat? Well, pot holders are there to keep you from getting burned. So if you use a conductor as a pot holder, it's going to transfer the heat directly to your hand. So we know pot holders should be poor conductors so that that way you don't get burned. We want it to not allow the heat to pass through. Silicon dioxide is a solid at room temperature, and methanol is a liquid. Which substance has the higher melting point? Okay, well, methanol is already a liquid, so that means it's already melted, whereas silicon dioxide is still a solid, so we need to heat it to make it melt, so silicon dioxide would have the higher uh, melting point of the two. All right, so hopefully you understand now a little bit more about physical properties.